for those who are going to watch this, this is my friend Achim Lemke who contact, contacted me about memory at a very significant time in relationship to memory and in, in, in the cases of what so many of us are experiencing. So I think um, however we could just leap into um, the session that you would usually do with someone and what I'll do is I will bring up concerns or questions that I know others have or may have so that we can sort of include awareness of what they're going through while we're working with me. And that would be wonderful if that's all right with you. Yeah, that would be fantastic. That would be so totally awesome. So um, it's a pleasure that I can sort of share my experiences with you. And, um, and normally what I do is uh, I start with people uh, on a completely different um, uh, level. Um, I start with them there um, where they um, have experienced their school days, you know, where there is a, a teacher at the front uh, at the blackboard or whiteboard and lecturing down to the, to the pupil, okay, to the pupils. This is what's usually happening. This is what they used to, even students, okay? So uh, I would come with facts and, and how the brain works and things like that to ease them in to what I'm actually going to do now. This is now um, already, let me just see this a moment. Um, so just to give you the indication. Um, so that's already on page 22 in my book. So that is uh, in, in, in the middle of the first course. Okay, because I don't want to bore you or anyone else with um, dull, um, dry, boring facts. <laughs> Because that, that, that doesn't actually help and it doesn't work. You see, because the best kept secret is if information is difficult to learn and all information that's coming our way is difficult to learn, the word information is difficult in itself, okay? It's difficult to learn. So you, yeah, you need to change it to make it memorable. And no lecturer, no book ever has touched that on that subject and presented information in such a way that makes it actually memorable for you. So uh, the headline is make it memorable. I like that headline. Yeah. So how do that you make... goes right with what we're working on lately. Yeah. Right. So how do you make any kind of information memorable? There's a one word answer. Well, I can think of a lot of one word answers. Creativity, pleomorphism. Yeah. All, this, faith, all this plays into belief. it. <laughs> all this plays into it, absolutely, okay? But there's one word, okay? And the word is imagination. Imagination. And it's interesting that you went like that and I went like that. Because when we talk about imagination, most people, they put their hands up like this. Most people. I've noticed. I, I, um, 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 I know I have taught this to hundreds of people, not thousands. I wish I could say that, but in the future it might be. Who knows? Uh, through people like you, this information can go to thousands of people. Okay, so that's my aim. Um, and um, so imagination. And in the word imagination, there is a German word in it. Magi, and that means magic. So imagination is your magic. And it comes straight out of the heart. It's honest, it's childlike, it's vibrant, it's creative, it's energy at the moment. And then you are, can feel how alive you are. Napoleon once said, imagination rules the world. Okay, uh, he lost... Water, in Waterloo, he lost, but, um, but he tried. He was brave enough to go for it because there was in his imagination and he, and he went for it. And this is what I'm saying to anyone, you know, if you can imagine something, just do it. You might fail, but you did it. And that's important. So you haven't failed because you, you did it. Uh, so you need to change the information to make it memorable. So as long as you can transform it back 
into its original form when the time comes. So learn it in a form your mind can handle. Okay. I love the way you describe this territory. Please continue. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so your job or any listener in the future, okay, is about to contact you or to contact me or to contact any of my previous participants and to ask the, the, the questions directly per email or to arrange that the Zoom. Call. So you're not you're now here live, Max. I call you Max, right? I know your name is Max, but it could be that I could call you Elizabeth or you can call me Elizabeth, you can call me Max or Mac or Mo. All of these are in use. Yeah, Max Maggie is coming Max back is really into use. Cool name. Max is the cool name. I like it. Okay, right. So um <laughs> this is how I got to know you. Anyway, Max. So what I'm trying to say is that um um so um um your job is to um disbelieve what I'm saying. Your job is when when I when when I say make it memorable. So when I say to you, make it memorable, what pops up in your head? So you already had a reaction. Yeah, this is what we're here for. And that's what we want to learn to make things memorable in our imagination, okay? So when something comes up for you, you know, a thought or an emotion um, or a picture, tell me instantly, your job is to interrupt me. I can interrupt you, I'm good at that. Yeah, that's very important. That's part of the process, you see to ask curious um, creative questions. Even if you think, I'm not talking about you now, but even if anyone thinks, this is a real dumb question, uh, I better not ask this. No, when it's a dumb question, that those are most of the time the best ones. So far, the words you're using are so similar to the words that we have been using intentionally. So I'm just really enjoying the resonance so much. Um, I, I want to say that that um, part of our conversations recently, today is July 12th, 2021, we have been talking quite a bit about how we are all immediately in co-creative facility with the universe. What we are experiencing at any given time is creating these little feedback loops in our lives so that if we keep thinking a thing or if we keep feeling a thing, it can keep us getting more of that thing. And when we recognize that we're, we're in a collaborative position, and that's not only with the elements we're aware of practically, immediately, like concrete things, but it's also we're in collaboration with the mystery of what happens next. And that's the only reason that I have been able to repair enough of my neurological function to I, talk to you like this today. That's yes. how many of us are alive. So. Um, we are often in this network, we say survivors of severity, and it is often severely disabled people who have been told, you will never get better. Oh, wow. You will never get through this. You have to rely on others to take care of you. You should not even have your own confidence. You should not want to do things for your own selves of your own right. And we are deprogramming that and, and uh, creating resources for self-led reprogramming so that each person recognizes how powerful she or they can be in 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 doing this every moment when when we are all and myself included can be in horrifying amounts of physical pain that no one understands or knows about yeah. or has has any concept of so imagination and the magic that we are co-creating together that for me is right in line with saying um, in terms of memory, that we're bringing something of ourselves to it so that it changes in a way that is part of us and accessible and meaningful. Right. Um, that, that's different. So that's where I'm at with what you've said so far and also why I'm so delighted. 